At this time, our pastor and bishop of the Shabbat Evangelistic Deliverance Temple is about to come and partake and partake the word of God unto our spirits. And let's receive him by clapping our hands. Everybody say, Bishop, Bishop, preach the word. Preach the word. Bishop, Bishop, preach the word. All right, you may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Give me the key of C, Brother Burton. Key of C. My favorite song that I love to sing, amen, is We Shall Behold Him. Amen. How many know that? That we shall behold Him. yesterday but the Lord gave me this message and he confirmed it yesterday amen sitting right there amen in the home going ceremony service amen 15th chapter of Luke I need my reader where's my reader where's my reader minister Shonda where's my reader preparing the food oh she preparing the food amen I need another reader somebody that can read loud and distinctly Luke 15. Amen. Evangelist Fountain, you want to do that for me? Oh, she can't see. I need somebody that can see, that's for sure. Luke 15. 11, starting at the 11th verse. Somebody that can read loud and distinctly. Please start. And he said, a certain man had two sons. Certain man had two sons, go on. And the younger of them said to his father, mm -hmm. Give me the portion of blood that falleth to me. Mm -hmm. And he divided unto them his living. Mm -hmm. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with, with riotous living. Mm -hmm. And when he spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. My Lord. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. Mm -hmm. And no man gave unto him. Mm -hmm. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to eat and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. All right. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Mm -hmm. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him mm -hmm. and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Yes. And the son said unto and the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, 
and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe. Bring it on. And put it on him. And put it on him. And put a ring on his hand mm -hmm. and shoes on his feet. Mm -hmm. And bring hither thy fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they begin to be merry. Stop right there. Read that verse again, the 24th verse. For this my son was dead. For this my son was dead. And is alive again. Mm -hmm. He was lost. He was lost. And is found. And is found. And thy and they begin to be merry. And they begin to be merry. You can close the book. Amen. We thank God for the reading of the word. And I want to use for a matter of a minute the subject. Uh, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. a raggedy life. A raggedy life. The word raggedy is simply the meaning thereof, meaning shabby or torn from where? Rough, run down, dilapidated, shameful, fall into pieces, broken down, in disrepair, the, con the condition of needing repairs, state of neglect. When you talk about raggedy, now they got some raggedy houses in Philadelphia. Amen. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You have, we have walked past some raggedy buildings. Just the other day, uh, in the Kensington area, a building fell down because it was so raggedy, shabby, torn from where, rough dilapidated but it also means shameful falling to pieces or in disrepair needing repair a state of neglect now when we're talking about a raggedy life we're talking about a life that need repair a man that goes to prison a woman or someone that goes to prison for different things rape and child molestation and wife beating and murder and robbing help someone commit a crime embezzlement drugs that's a person that has a raggedy life Amen. then we deal with a drug addict, strung out. Now, I, I don't know too many people that strung out on marijuana, but I, I, I dare to say there's some people that don't really want to get up and go to work from smoking marijuana. Amen. They think that the life will come to them instead of them doing what they need to do. Cocaine, heroin, morphine, tranquilizers, Valium. Oh yeah, some of y'all can get addicted to those things. Percocets. And and what's that other one? Oxycontin. Mm -hmm. Y'all, there are some prescription drugs that you can get addicted to. Tylenol PM. Pain pills. Crack. Sherm. Some of y'all don't know what Sherm is. Ice, crank, crystal meth. And, and it causes them to steal from their relatives, friends, and strength. I've even had where they uh, seemingly wanted to do damage to somebody because they couldn't get a fix. Some of them even sold their rings, their clothes, the car, the house. 
TV. Some even went as far as to sell their body. And some have even sold their soul. Come on now. Then they, they tell all sorts of lies. A drug addict will stand out on the street and say, Hey man, I'm trying to get me some food. Can you give me a dollar? Mm -hmm. Y'all seen them? And they be standing out there only to try to go get them a fix. They lie to their boss. They done got strung out. They lie to their boss and they tell the boss that I'm doing all right. And they start missing day after day at work. Then family members try to help them. Mm -hmm. And you, you go out of your way to try to help them and think that they're going to get better. And, and you, 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 you give them money and then you turn around and you, you try to take them here and there. Hoping that they will get better, but their life is raggedy because of drugs. Amen. Friends, and some have even lost their spouse because of the raggedy life. And they sink so low just to get a hit off the pipe, a shot in the arm, or a snort in the nose. Some men have even engaged in debase activity. Some men have even lowered their standard to the point where you don't even want to talk about what they would do for him. Raggedy life. Then we go to that of a lewd woman or a lewd man. It used to be just women, but now it's men too. A woman desperate, whether for pleasure or a man desperate to sell his or her body. Some of them say, I need to feed the babies at home. Some say it is to support a drug addict. Some enjoy having different partners each night. Have nothing to do with it. And then some have become unconcerned with life and feel that this is the way out. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Amen. Misused by their father, their uncle, their cousin and felt that this is a way to show love. Oh, y'all might as well pray with me. Amen. This, this is a raggedy life because the woman then or the man have to shift themselves to a lower standard of love. And what they call love is not really love at all. Come on, man. Because they will settle for anything. Somebody come along and tell them, baby, you look good. And, 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 and they think that it's all that, but I'm here to tell you the devil is tricking you up, baby. Hallelujah, come on. And some men think that they're God's gift to women. They think they can have any skirt tail that flashes by. But I'm here to tell you that you're living a raggedy life. Hallelujah. Greedy for money. Say so this is the quickest way. To get money. This is a heavy one here. Some folks are married to the wrong spouse. Mm -hmm. Then a dead in marriage going nowhere. No love. No respect. No trust. No communication. No understanding. No compromising. Even they go as far as to sleep in separate rooms. Mm -hmm. They eat at separate times. Yeah. There's no intimacy. They're not even warm to each other anymore. They barely speak to one another. They wake up and it's almost as if a stranger is in the house. Come on now. There's no joy. No peace. They're only together for outward appearance. That's a raggedy life. Amen. When you have to just keep up appearances and you're not really in love with each other anymore. You're just there trying to buy time. After a while, you're going to get tired of that. Hallelujah. Married to the wrong spouse. The Lord didn't give him, give him to you. You reached out there and grabbed him. Come on now. Said, oh, I think I can get him saved. And think I can pull him into church. Well, you can't pull the devil in the church. Amen. If he was a devil when you met him, he's going to be a devil from now on. The Bible said, be not unequal, unequally yoked with unbelievers. Hallelujah. And men, we're out there for everything switching. Uh -huh. Some of
of us going to fool around and pull one of them that used to be something else. Yeah. And we're going to take them home, but he, it ain't a she, it's a he. <laughs> Which brings me to the next raggedy life. Nobody want to talk about it, but homosexuality. Some say I was raised the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Father was a weak bat. No feminine attraction. They succumbed to chasing men. Now I'm talking on the man's side now. Don't worry, I'm going to get on the women's side too. <laughs> Sleeping with those of the same sex. In and out of gay clubs. See, I've been very hurt, deep hurt. I got a very deep hurt by women and men. So they say, well, I, I, I got to turn to my same sex. Women losing their nature. Supposed to be feminine. You know, it ain't nothing like a feminine woman. Amen. You look, well, Lord Jesus. You look at a woman that's in her prime and in her womanhood, and you look at how beautiful she is. You know she can put on something that smells good. She can put on something that looks good. And when she walk, her caressing of her walk is just something about it, Bishop, that when you look at her, you know she's a woman. But look at this. Here's a woman that turns into a butch. Come on now, Pastor. Get her head, head shaved down to her brain. Talk about it. Put on leather straps. Walk out and say, I need a man. I need a woman just like y'all need one. Done changed their nature. A robust man. Got muscles like, like, like Adonis. And walk out and then there he is switching. <laughs> Who have heard of such a thing? Come talking all sweet to you. Man, get out of my face. But we have come to this time now where folks are living this type of raggedy life. Amen. And they, they don't want you to say nothing about it. They say, church folks, y'all be quiet. We got a right to serve the Lord. Well, God said that what you're doing is an abomination. And until you get yourself right, you can't serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Up switching. <laughs> trying to sing Zion's song. Up switching. Trying to preach to the congregation of the Lord. Up switching. Excuse me, brother, Bird, trying to play the music. Up switching, trying to, excuse me, brother, uh, uh, brother, trying to play the drum. You can't do it because that's a raggedy life. Amen. Now let me come on down through here. A drunkard. Oh yeah, I'm coming down through here today. Sloppy drunk. Drink to get away from his or her problems. I tell you what's the worst thing that I've ever seen in my life is a sloppy drunk woman. It is so disrespectful for a woman to be sloppy drunk. Amen. Falling all out in the streets. Can't even keep themselves together. You expect a woman to have more class about themselves. But then when you see her all sloppy drunk, all in the street just falling all out, and somebody have to take her home, and she don't know whether the home that she's going to is hers or somebody else's. Come on now. Say, well, I got an unfaithful wife or husband, so they drink. They say, well, my children are in trouble, so I drink. Some of them say, well, I got laid off from a high-paying job, so I had to drink. Some of them say, I lost a loved one, so I turned to the bottle. Some of them say, well, I'm going to die anyway. I got a fatal disease, so I'm going to drink myself to death. Some are just hurting on the inside, so they say, I'm going to drink and paint the town red. Drink for fun. Drink for pleasure. Drink to pass time. Drink with the fellas or with the girls. Drink to feel good. Drink, drink because you say, I'm a man. 
And I can drink what I want to drink. Yeah, you can. But what are the consequences Amen. after you finish drinking? Amen. Drink because they don't feel like they are proper father. Drink because they just had a divorce. Then we go to the problem of a gambler. Gamma clothes, shoes, cars, home, money, life saving. <laughs> Gamma the bill money, the rent, the power money, the telephone. Gamma the paycheck after two weeks of working for it. Gamma the disability checks. I, 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 I've seen, oh Lord help me Jesus. It ain't nothing to see a 65 year old man or woman sitting there gambling all of the money that they have to pay their bills for the rest of the month. Then they have to eat dog food for the rest of the month. Welfare checks, taking the children money and going to the parks. Oh, y'all didn't think I knew about that, huh? <laughs> going to Chester. Going to Atlantic City. Taking the welfare check. The social security check. The unemployment check. Give them your son or daughter's college funds. Then you turn around and start punning things. You can't get money, you start punning. You pawn your TV, your jewelry, your stereo. You even pawn your car. Prize possessions. That's a raggedy life. Get yourself in such a fix. Can't even pay your bills. Then your wife want to walk out on you. Husband say, I'm tired of this. And I found out that women gamble more than men. Amen, wolves. It, it, I see more women standing in that line to pay, play the number. Oh, Lord Jesus, don't let me hurt y'all feelings. Standing in that line to play the numbers than men. Y'all didn't know I was going to preach this today, did you? A ragged in life in disrepair, need of repair. Well, let's look at our text today. And we find out about being righteous and time pass and that we think that we're so good. But the scripture states over there in Isaiah 64 and 6, somebody get that right quick, Isaiah 64 and 6. Anybody got it? Isaiah 64 and 6. Now that's Old Testament. If y'all look for Isaiah New Testament, come to Bible study. Y'all in the wrong testament. Isaiah 64 and 6. Well, we are, but we are all unclean as unclean things. Go ahead. And all our, righteousness our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade. And we all do fade as a leaf. As a leaf. So, 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 so that none of us can really boast of being all that on our own. See, some folks like to think that they're more righteous than other folks. And I'm telling you, preachers got problems too. Oh, y'all ain't got to say, man, I'm a preacher, so I'm talking about myself. Preachers have problems too. And all of them, probably, if you could put all of us together, we might just need to pray for one another. Amen. Because there's some preachers struggling with some type of habit that they need the Lord to deliver them from. So the same God that delivers you from your habit need to deliver me from mine. Oh, you ain't got to say man. I know what I'm talking about. No more, Pastor. But we all are an unclean thing. So some of us are trying to fool one another saying we got it. But honey, you're an unclean thing by yourself. Amen. Some might say, well, I come to church every time the door is open. You're just still an unclean thing. Some say, well, I give an offering. And I pay my tithes and, and, and all that, but you're still an unclean thing. Some say, well, I serve on the usher board. Well, you're just an unclean thing. 
Some say, I'm the church mother. Uh huh. And, and I tell young women how to dress and how they should do. You steal an unclean thing. Some of them say, Well, I'm a deacon and I know how to raise money. You steal an unclean thing. Some say, Well, I can sing like an angel. You steal an unclean thing. Some say, I can play the instrument until they're shouting in the aisles. You steal an unclean thing. Some say, I can preach until they stand on their feet. Still an unclean thing. Amen. Say so we're like filthy rags and we fade as a leaf. And our righteousness are like the wind that taketh us away. So my friend, a raggedy life is a wasted life. Uh, a shameful life. It's a run down life. Amen. It's a rough life. It's a dilapidated life. It's a shabby life. Better come on, Brother Burton. I'm going to leave you at the bridge. It's a life that fallen to pieces. Uh -huh, and it suggests in our text about the prodigal son. Let's look at the twist in this parable. Uh, he had money. He had friends. He had women. He had fame. He had company. But the scripture plainly states that when he had spent all, he had no more money. He had no more friends. See, that's what happens when you lose your money, y'all. All your friends leave you alone. Uh -huh, and then the women don't want to be around you because she ain't got no more money. Then you lose your fame. Mm -hmm. And you had no more company. But one day, uh, one day, he said, look at me, I'm a fool. Out here in the swine, in the hog pit. You see, sometimes you have to come to yourself and realize which way you're going. Some of us ain't came to ourselves yet. We're still in the hog pen. We're out there wallowing in sin. But the Lord said, come unto me, all ye that are labor and are here laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. For a meek and lowly, ah, you shall find rest. Some of us uh, need to come to the Lord uh, and say, Lord, here I am, standing in the need of prayer. Come on unto the Lord. Let him have your burdens. Let him have your problems. Let him have your heartaches. Let him have your pain. Come on to the Lord. And I can see Jesus uh, as he dropped down and there he was he stepped off with a script in his hand he had been writing since the foundation of the world he wrapped himself in flesh he gave himself a 33 year tenure he stepped off in Bethlehem went on down to Nazareth went to the Jordan to be baptized of John went on to Jerusalem and they called him Hosanna they lied on betrayed him. They spit on him. They whipped him all night long. But that ain't all that happened. They crucified him. You know what happened. They took him out there on Golgotha's hill. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. The, the sun refused to shine. The moon took a hemorrhage and ran down in blood. The earth staggered like a trucking man. You know what happened. But Sunday morning, bright and early. Sunday morning, glad sunshine morning. Yes, April fresh morning, new drop morning. somebody here that has a regular life and quiet as it kept the answer to your problem and I'm trying to digress 
but I feel Holy Ghost power. I'm trying to digress, but I feel the Lord's presence in this house. There's somebody here with a broken heart. There's somebody here with a wounded spirit. There's somebody here that's been downcast and pushed aside by the world. But the Lord has said, come on, come on, come on unto me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for how you have blessed us today. We thank you, Lord, for how you have called us to such a, an appeal. You said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, that if any man shall hear my voice and shall open up the door, that I will come in and sup with them. Lord, there's someone here today that needs your hand touch. They say, I'm tired of living the way that I've been living. I'm tired of struggling with the same thing that I've been struggling with. And I need your hand touch on today. We ask your Lord that you would give them the mind to step out and come unto you. Thank you for your word. Thank you, O oh God, for your anointing. Ask you now, God, that you would touch us each and every one. Bless us, even so. You may be here at this time. Sister Jackie, come on out. Come on, baby. We're going to pray for you. If there's anyone here to say, I want to accept the Lord with you. Say, I'm tired of living and being taken advantage of. See, the devil is taking advantage of you, whether you know it or not. You want to make a fool out of you. That's what the devil want to do. The devil say, I, I, I can use you up. But God wants to use you.